Okay, great. So, again, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Lynn Reeserhoven, and uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, improved data flows for the management of invasive alien species. Am I right? Like this? Okay. So, First, very quick, the context, invasive alien species, as you all might know, have a serious negative environmental impact. And the best way to uh, deal with them, uh, there are a few priority approaches. There is prevention, of course, by preventing them entering the country, early warning and rapid response, which was already discussed in the, few, in the talks here before. And um, also in this context, I would like to make some advertising for our early alert system that we have set up in Belgium as well. So you can find it at uh, alert.reparias.be, but this is not the focus of my talk, but um, I think it might be interesting to know that this exists. Um, but that, what I would really like to focus on in this talk is about uh, the management actions. So once the species has settled, how do you report on the management actions uh, that have been performed? Um, so there has been a large diversity in uh, reporting management actions um, that goes from people not writing just nothing down and just keep it all in their heads or people using pen and paper or Excel sheets and also uh, ranging to dedicated applications focusing on one or multiple species. So that's a bit of a problem if you want to merge data together and, and uh, evaluate the status of management actions. Also, there is limited data sharing between organizations and limited data, open data publication. So this is something we really wanted to uh, focus on in the Life Reparias project. So, but if we want to publish data openly uh, to GBIF, we want to know what are the minimal requirements for reporting on uh, management actions and uh, does Darwin Core cover all our needs? So, but first I want to focus a bit on the minimal um, requirements. What do we need to include when we report on management data? Uh, so we did this exercise also by developing an application for the reporting of manage management actions and uh, what came out of it of course is that you need information about the taxon location date and time and uh, one of the main things is you want to know what was your activity what did you do in the field so we made a distinction between two things well, on, the on, on the one hand you have what we call an intervention or an action is you go somewhere and you do something. You withdraw plants, you uh, put out a crayfish trap. Uh, so that's what we call an intervention or an action. And on the other hand, you want to return to the field and also do an evaluation. So did my act, was my action actually uh, well performed? Did it have some effect? So that's, there's a distinction between interventions and field visits. And then you want to report on uh, the intervention type. So uh, what, what did you do exactly? Was it manual removal, machinal removal, biological removal? Uh, there are a few other categories here, but that's also important to include. And of course, you want to know how many individuals and what was the unit. These are important stuff you want to report on. Another thing is the materials. What did you use? Which brand did you use? Uh, was the material maybe defect or not? Um, and importantly, bycatch. So you have your, spe your focal species, the, the species you were interested in, but perhaps you also caught like an endangered species. You would like to report on that as well. Was it dead? Was it alive? Wounded? And one of the important things is also the management effort. So how many hours were the people uh, working on that in the fields? Um, and how many people? And at last, you, want to, you might want to include some images to prove uh, that or, or to show uh, the situation on the fields. Um, so all this information we try to combine in a series of tables, uh, all linked to each other. Uh, and this was our draft community-driven data exchange format, which we called um, MANIAS, Managing Invasive Alien Species. So 
with this draft format, our idea was to exchange data between organizations uh, so that they can know from each other what they are doing. And central in these tables are, uh, on the left side, you have the actions, and on the right side, you have the evaluation. So the two key tables in uh, this data exchange format. And linked to that, so the actions describe what did you do in the field, uh, at a specific, specific location, time, and on which species. And then the evaluation, uh, as I mentioned before, says, ah, okay, um, I was in the field yesterday, I withdrew some species, oh, they're gone, or like a year later, that might be more effective to evaluate. Um, and all these have um, specific information about the location, a taxon, and also about the actors performing the action, uh, and, and each has one specific table. Uh, but there's more information linked to the management actions, as I mentioned. So we also want to report on media or on uh, links to the actions on materials and the non-target impact. So all these tables are connected uh, by the identifiers. And I like one package that you can share between organizations. That was the ID. Now, of course, we... Um, the first idea was to uh, exchange information between organizations directly, but more and more we are thinking not to go directly by uh, developing a completely new data exchange format, but we think that Darwin Core uh, archives might be um, yeah, best also suited to exchange this information through GBIF. But we were not sure, does Darwin Core really cover it all? So. We zoomed in a bit on the tables um, that we identified. Uh, and then, so we saw that the event core could be uh, a good place to start. So the actions and the evaluations could be considered as events. And linked to these events, you have uh, information about the tax on the locations and the actors included in the occurrence extension. So that's the basic ID, and that's fine. But then there's some more complex situation here because, for instance, you have the media files you want to include, but um, you can use the associate me associated media uh, field in the occurrence extension, but you would like to give maybe some more information. So you would need the odd one extension, but the star schema does not allow the inclusion of the odd one extension if you have an event core and an uh, occurrence extension. So that's one problem. Then you have the problem related to your sampling efforts, to your reporting of the working hours, you know, target effects. So one way to deal with it is to use the sampling protocol and the sampling effort field in the Darwin Core archive, but then you have to squeeze it all in. So like a lot of information in one field, which doesn't really read very well. Another option would be to use the extended measurement or facts extension, which is maybe better, but also it's, it's, all, it's not very easy to interpret. So what you really want is like, one field with a vocabulary for each uh, term we want in uh, to to share data uh, between organizations. So uh, this is um, I'm zooming in now a little bit on the event occurrence structure here. So what would be the main event would be like the management of uh, a crayfish species at a specific location over a period of time. That would be the parent event. And then if you zoom deeper, you have the child event, which is, for instance, one evaluation on a specific time point. I am here on this particular specific day and I see 10 individuals of uh, this crayfish. The next day you go into the field. That's a new event. So child two, where you place a trap. Another event would be child three is where you reevaluate what is in your trap. So in this way, you can hierarchically structure your data into the um, event core and the occurrence extension. So again, that's the basic idea and it works well. But then, yeah, again, uh, so you could have linked to your parent event. You could have information about land ownership. Uh, more information about your organization. So perhaps multiple partners work together on one, uh, one event. So we want to mention who, which organization was involved in this, in, in this particular event. 
you want to report on size. Yeah, again, it's the same information. Eh? Working hours, sampling materials, non-target impacts, uh, the field manager, uh, its role in the field. What is it? What is it, the volunteer? What is a field manager working for an organization? And so on. So I think my main uh, conclusion here is that you can use Darwin Core for reporting of the basic information of management actions, but there are many things that need to be squeezed in into the sampling efforts, uh, or um, they need to be captured by the measurement or uh, fact, the extended measurement or facts extension. Uh, so there is a way to report on it, but it doesn't always look that nice. So what we would really want is for each term a separate column with its own vocabulary. And I think we're not quite there yet. So I was very happy to see the latest developments in the Humboldt extension, um, which expands the Darwin core uh, with vocabulary to describe uh, biological inventories. And so um, what you can do when uh, uh, with the Humboldt extension is you can report about the geospatial scope, the temporal scope, the taxonomic scope, and very importantly here, uh, the methodology and the materials and uh, efforts. So I think this extension already covers another part from our needs. Um, but there are still things and I'm not sure of does it, are we talking about the same things here when we talk about uh, the efforts spent in the fields? Um, also, yeah, I, th I think we need to zoom a little bit deeper, the roles of the, the actors, uh, land ownership is also a question. I'm not sure, it might be, I'm not sure. Um, so I think it offers some opportunities, but I think still there's a need to work on more vocabularies and more terminology uh, to report on management efforts. So our way forward is um, we would really like to get more use cases. Um, it's a bit like the same we did for the um, invasive alien species occurrence data, for which I saw the paper that you cited for the new vocabularies. Um, we would like to do the same thing, the same exercise, gather more use cases, build a community with people working on this data, see how we can interact with the Humboldt core uh, extension and people working around that. Uh, and my final hope is to extend the Darwin core with uh, new terminology and uh, vocabulary. So a big cry for help. We need your input. So please contact me if you think you can help. Um, and with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. One question, if anyone's got one. Nope. All right, we'll move on then. Uh, the next one should be online. 